Now, I talked about uh, the uh, crouch gate and cerebral palsy. You can see uh, an example of this. It's quite common, about three in a thousand. Um, very often associated with hypoxia around the time of birth, which can cause, be caused by a number of things, uh, blood flow problems uh, in the placenta, through the umbilical cord. Um, but even that is probably only 10 to 20 percent. Uh, other, in other cases, there's not an obvious blood flow, blood flow problem, and so there could be just some developmental uh, deficit or some exposure that we don't fully understand, a toxin, um, infectious agent back during some critical period. One theme is that it, it tends to look like uh, a hyperactivity very often. So you've got this uh, uh, spasticity which uh, is bad and then often gets worse. And so it's very, uh, this uh, interaction of ongoing physical therapy trying to keep joints extended, loosened, um, and try to facilitate gait, and you're fighting against some ongoing process that continues to make the, the spasticity worse and worse. Um, and again, now, you, you know, there's, think about treating, well, what, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't get uh, better. So uh, phys the spasticity itself doesn't get better. The physical uh, therapy uh, can sometimes help in, in lengthening the muscles. There are surgical interventions that can help in lengthening the muscle. Uh, but but it's, there's not a, a natural uh, recovery process that, 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 that helps most uh, people who suffer from it. But then you think about treatments. Well, if it's simple overactivity of outgoing pathways, so the idea would be maybe you can inhibit that. The problem is, uh, you know, just like with seizures, there's immense side effects. These are people who are sometimes, but not always, cognitively impaired as well, and so you certainly don't want to dampen down their attention, their memory, and many of the medications that you would use to do that would, would also cause those side effects. Uh, you could think about muscle relaxants, and there are things that inhibit muscle uh, contraction, but those will tend to cause uh, more flaccid or weak uh, uh, strength and, and or global fashion, and that can worsen problems as well, actually even increase spasticity. And finally, there are surgical things, and, and you know, because this, this kind of gait can actually, because they're kind of stuck in this posture for a number of years, that actually affects their ongoing development as they grow, and so the, the tendon ends up being too short, okay, because they're in this position where it ends up being too long, and so it ends up being the, the wrong length. And then you think, okay, what well, are the surgical options? Can we lengthen or shorten the tendon? And, but that is, uh, if, if you do that wrong, you've got a serious problem. If you lengthen the tendon just a little too much, then it's floppy and the muscle can't uh, exert a power stroke on the skeleton and you can make things worse. And if you, if you make it a, a little uh, too short, of course, that'll worsen the spasticity. And even if you hit it right, often that has no effect on the crouch gait. And this is because we don't understand uh, the full details of the uh, multi-joint dynamics that create the gait. And so, a huge opportunity for, for uh, engineers to think uh, in intelligent fashion about this. Um, you know, we mentioned surgery. Uh, you know, maybe there are other kinds of uh, things you could do for spinal cord injury. People are looking at sort of electrode-based stimulations we've talked about. People who have uh, stroke, uh, you know, some of these rehab programs are very repetitive, and so maybe they could, you could have not... Uh, occupational therapist or physical therapist, but an actual uh, robot to handle this. And so this is something that people are working on. How could we, uh, particularly for stroke, but it might be relevant for cerebral palsy or other um, musculoskeletal disorders, could we have a, sort of an automated rehab process? Uh, certainly being thought about for cerebral palsy and uh, for uh, Parkinson's disease as well. Of course, you could also think about designing whole new uh, body parts. Uh, and this is something that's you know, separate from the cerebral palsy question, but this is an active area of bioengineering research. There are people trying to build um, uh, physical devices that will actually receive uh, neural signals and will execute uh, uh, corresponding movements. There are um, a few limitations to this. One is you have to understand the neural signals that are coming. Where do you record from? Do you record in, in motor cortex? Do you record from an outgoing nerve? Uh, where do you pick your, your signals from? And um, because we don't really know the neural code for anything, what people have settled on is, is 
looking at uh, nearby uh, moving uh, muscles that are already uh, connected. And so you can actually think about strategies where you move an already wired in nerve like a pectoral muscle and actually use that uh, uh, as a, a source of uh, uh, signals. And so that creates a, a, an electrical signal in the muscle. And that's something we understand, muscle contraction. Okay, and let's use that. We can pick up that signal uh, either by the force or uh, the equivalent of an EKG to detect the uh, electrical signal. And antennas will pick that up and turn that into prosthetic movement. So there's this kind of a workaround that people are, are thinking about. And this is a limitation to the fact that we don't know the neural code for movement. We don't know the pattern of neural activity in the motor cortex that means reach or grab. And Krishna Shinoy's lab here at Stanford, he's working in monkeys uh, uh, recording in motor cortex during very well-defined reach tasks. Um, and probably is one of the, the world leaders in that. Try to get you that movie, but what this shows is an example of Crouchgate. I think it didn't copy across; it wasn't embedded right. But uh, that's it's actually a really helpful thing to, to see the, uh, the Crouchgate in operation. So we've talked about these things. Things for you guys to think about: understanding the simulations, understanding the physical basis for force production, and thinking about uh, prosthetic devices and, and regeneration. That's on sort of the neuromuscular front, um, and we've talked a lot about the muscular junction as well.